Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing Coffee Roaster, designed by Sashi and brought to publishing in the United States by Stronghold Games. In a game of Coffee Roaster, your goal as the player is to brew the very best cup of coffee, and you're going to do that by roasting the beans in your bag and adjusting the contents of the bag until you think you're going to do well on a cup test, which is where you draw coffee beans from your bag, place them on each area of the cup, and see what your total score will be. Your target score changes depending on which coffee you've chosen to brew, and the game comes with several. So you'll have several beginner, intermediate, and advanced level brews to work on, and you're gonna get a little bit of geographical information about each type of coffee, as well as information about how to set your game up and what your target scores are on the back of the card. So for example, if I'm choosing to go for the Altura Oaxaca, this card's gonna tell me everything I need to know. So the contents of my bag are detailed here, so I know that I need to put in 13 zero level beans, four totally new green beans, four moisture, one bad bean, and then a certain combination of flavor tokens. I also know what kind of point target I'm going for at the end of the game. So if I can draw exactly 14 points worth of beans in my cup test, then I will score 10 points. I can also get flavor points for having two green flavor tokens and a blue. So basically what the game is about is knowing what you're going for, what's in your bag, and trying to do your best to make sure that on your cup test you draw tokens from your bag that meet these scoring conditions as well as possible. So in this game, my roast would start at zero, obviously, and then I would place my token here for my turn marker right here on the eight because there are four moisture tokens in the bag and how many rounds you have is determined by how many moisture tokens you put in. I'm also gonna put some smoke tokens out here. So basically when you reach these thresholds, these red markers, you add smoke to your bag because, well, things are getting hot, you're roasting your coffee, and you're also going to roast your beans twice in that round that you draw hence the red. So you can get into some pretty dangerous situations if you are not being careful. So basically how each turn will work is that, except for the first turn where we know where our thermostat's gonna be, you'll raise your thermostat by one, draw the number of tokens indicated on your thermostat, and then make adjustments as needed. So for our first turn, we would draw eight tokens. And let's just kind of see what we draw, and I'll talk you through them. All right, so what's gonna happen with these is the moisture is automatically gonna burn off. We're gonna put it right back in the box, which by the way, is very handily organized. It makes it really easy to switch this stuff out. So now we've discussed moisture, let's talk about flavor tokens. Flavor tokens lead to the game's biggest challenges because they are the pieces around which you have to make the biggest decisions. So when it comes to a flavor token, you can either leave it in the bag and hope that it gets drawn for your cup test because it does affect your score. For example, we know that for Altura Oaxaca, we are gonna want some green and blue flavor tokens, so we don't want to spend them all on the board. However, flavor tokens are also played for effects in the game, both the ones that are marked here on the board and the ones that each flavor token brings to the table on its own. Each of the flavor tokens does something special in the game. For example, red stands for the body of your coffee, and what it allows you to do is combine two beans. That wouldn't work great this turn because zero and zero is still zero, but if I had two ones, I could actually combine them to make a two, for example. Or I could combine a one and a two to make a three. The blue flavor tokens stand for aroma, and they allow you to do basically the opposite. You can take a higher level bean and split it into two lower level ones. This is particularly useful if you've had a whole bunch of turns and you're starting to get these high level beans that you're worried about burning. The highest number level for a bean is four, and if you roast something beyond the four point, then you have a burnt bean that goes in your bag and costs you points if you draw that during your cup test. So you do not want to burn your beans. The other type of flavor token is this green one. It basically symbolizes acidity, but what it allows you to do is preserve two of the beans that you draw on a turn, put them back in your bag unchanged. That's particularly nice if you draw a green flavor token on these levels where you roast twice because you don't want to burn a high level bean because you couldn't control how quickly that roasting ratcheted up. However, in order to get any of these effects, you basically have to give up that flavor token forever. And you give it up by placing it here on the board. You do get bonuses for placing those flavor tokens, but they are lost, so you have to time it correctly. Flavor tokens can either be used for these one-time effects over here. I particularly like the one that lets you get rid of undesirable tokens from your bag, so if you draw a whole bunch of smoke or burnt beans and then have a flavor token, you can use that flavor token to get rid of them. 
but there are other bonus actions as well. The other thing that you can do is place flavor tokens in order to save up for these bonuses for your cup test. So if you want to have a better end of the game with more options, then these are tokens that you're going to be very interested in trying to acquire. However, you don't have enough flavor tokens to get them all, and you do still need flavor tokens for your cup test generally, so you have to make some careful decisions as you play, and those decisions may change based on the coffee variety you're trying to blend. So now that we've talked about the flavor tokens, let's talk about the beans. Zero beans are generally pretty useless, although I always like to take one of them and put it up here, because what it'll do is if you leave a zero and a one here, you'll get the wild flavor token, which is very useful. The rest of these are gonna get roasted, and what that means is that each of the zeros is going to upgrade to a one. So the number value of coffee beans that you draw goes up each time that you draw them. In some ways this is good because for example, I know that I'm gonna to need to get a 14 on my cup test to get the points that I wanna get for my roast. So right now there's only about four roast in the bag at all and I need to get to 14. I know that I need to be roasting my beans. However, if I don't manage to do that efficiently enough and end up taking too many turns, I can have too many high value beans and end up with kind of a burnt tasting roast. So at the end of a turn, depending on what you do, you return everything to the bag that you didn't play, you adjust your thermostat up here, and this time I'm going to draw nine tokens from the bag and basically do the same thing. There's also a little bit of a push or luck element to the game because you get to choose when to stop roasting your coffee. So for example, I might decide I don't want all those smoke tokens to come in my bag and stop on 11, but that's risky depending on what beans I've drawn and how much roast there actually is in my cup. So coffee roaster is partially about luck, but it's also partially about making smart decisions and being really aware of what's in your bag. The game ends with the cup test that I've been talking about. So for the cup test, you're going to take any tokens that you might have earned from playing flavor tokens, and then you're just going to draw tokens from your bag, place them on the cup, and then you're going to give yourself a score based on the total value of the beans in the cup. If you draw something bad, there is a tray that you can put three beans that you don't want on. If you get the tray extension, token, then you can dump a couple of other beans in the course of your cup test. It should be noted that you will also absolutely need to have enough beans left in your bag to fill your cup, because otherwise you lose a bunch of points. You don't want your roast to be too distilled down. So that's Coffee Roaster. It's actually pretty quick, it's pretty simple, but it does have some interesting decisions to make, especially where the flavor tokens are concerned, and when it comes to knowing when to stop and go ahead and do your cup test. So now for some final thoughts. Overall, I really like Coffee Roaster, and it's a solo game that I've spent a lot of time with. I actually originally imported a copy from Japan with the old art, and I'm happy to see it more widely available here in the States. So first, the good points. One thing I really like about Coffee Roaster is its variety. There's several different brews that you can go for and at several different difficulty levels. So it's possible to have subtle variations from game to game as you sit down and play. And this is one of those games that I find myself playing a lot of times in a row. So having that variety is especially important for a player like me. Mechanically, I also particularly love the flavor tokens, especially deciding what to do with them when you happen to draw them from the bag. Because flavor tokens can be used for so many different things, either in the actual cup test, as something that'll get you a special bonus action, or as a way to manipulate the beans that are in your bag, you actually have a lot of choices as to how you want to approach flavor tokens, and making those choices throughout the game is really enjoyable, fun, and tense, and it's one of my favorite aspects of playing Coffee Roaster. Keeping track of what's in the bag is also a really enjoyable part of the game for me. I enjoy the puzzle of trying to increase my odds as much as possible of getting a high score, and I also like the mental exercise of knowing exactly what's in the bag, what I'm hoping to draw, and having sort of a goal in terms of what kind of beans I want in there for my cup test. And I think one of Coffee Roaster's biggest selling points is just that it's one of those games that is easy to set up, easy to take down, and quick to play. So if you're looking for something that's light, fast, suitable for a work night, something relaxing, then Coffee Roaster is potentially going to fit that bill for you. That said, I do have some concerns about Coffee Roaster. It's a game that I personally like, but I also think that it has some flaws that you have to know about going in. 
My first concern is that sometimes turns can feel a little bit dead. This can either happen because you've drawn flavor tokens that you don't need, flavor tokens that you can't do anything with, or just all beans with numbers on them and you just increase the number, throw them back in the bag and the turn is done. So there are sometimes gonna be turns in the game where you don't feel like you have a lot of agency in terms of what's happening and you feel like you're very much subject to the luck of the draw from the bag. Because the game plays so quickly and the turns go by so quickly and there are other decisions to make, this is something that you might not mind too much. I don't really find myself minding it too much most of the time. But if you want every single one of your turns to feel like you really did something and contributed to your game state, then Coffee Roaster may frustrate you. The randomness of drawing from the bag can also affect your cup test. So if you don't get good draws as you play and you don't get a chance to adjust your brew as you see fit, that's also gonna affect your cup test. You can always have bad draws no matter how you've played your game, but it can be very frustrating to feel like you didn't quite get a chance to do everything you wanted to do because of the draws that you had earlier in the game and then have those draws affect your cop test later so you don't draw any of the tokens that you want from your bag during that final scoring draw. Again, because this game is so light and so quick and you can just turn around and play it again, it doesn't bother me too much, but it's something that really might bother you. The last comment I want to make about Coffee Roaster is that I'm not convinced that it's worth the MSRP. Full disclosure, I imported this from Japan for 60 bucks a couple years ago, and it was expensive. It's a lot of money for the game that Coffee Roaster is, but I just had to know because I'd heard so much buzz about it and I'm a solo game reviewer, so of course I went for it. The current MSRP here in the United States is about $45, and while I'm sure you can find a copy cheaper than that, I'm still not convinced that that is an appropriate price for this game. Coffee Roaster is a quick game, it's a light game, but I don't think it's a substantial game that justifies that substantial of a price. Of course, people feel differently about game prices and your mileage may vary, but I felt that it was worth noting. But overall, Coffee Roaster is a quick, fun, snappy game. I really enjoy playing it and I'm so happy to see it more widely available here in the United States. If it sounds like something for you, it probably is because I find it very enjoyable and I rate it a seven out of 10. Happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.